project that you want to start. So if I was a locksmith and there wasn't a locksmith group yet, I would start a locksmith group on MySpace. If I wanted to start my own lockspace group and there were other lockspace groups, I would still go to those lockspace groups and join them, locksmith groups, and I would join them because if I'm trying to target locksmith people, I'd either start my own group or join another or I'd do a combination of the two. 200 and some odd million people, majority of the people are younger, demographics fall in the 18 to 34 category, like DIG, DIG is 92% male in the 18 to 34 year old range, that's DIG, different. You need to know those things. MySpace, you can carve it out. Facebook makes it even easier. We are not going to have time to do our presentation on Facebook, folks. Facebook makes it much easier for you to target the demographics that you're seeking than MySpace does. But whatever I want to target, I target. Is, is that a good enough answer, though? I mean, realistically, because you have the ability to start a group about any topic that you want, because you have the ability to search for videos and audios and friends based on certain parameters within the site itself, then you just build the group or the profile page that fits what it is that you're targeting for that. If you've got another product, let's say that you also do birthday balloon decorations. You wouldn't want to have the same page for birthday balloons, would you, as you would for locksmith? Would you, folks? So what would you do? I'd set up another free MySpace page. It's free. Why would I want to send some tra same traffic to my balloon page that I would to my locksmith page? Would I use the same conversion techniques? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't use the same voice in writing my copy. I wouldn't use the same free offers. I wouldn't use the same calls to actions. I would simply build a different MySpace page and a different group if I wanted to build a group. I've got blogs. I've got RSS feeds. I can... Where did I put that clicker? So here, this is for Underground Confessions. In the material, we show you how to do all the stuff that's on this page. You can put a banner here. The stuff they put here is worthless. Replace it. They have no problem with you replacing it. It can be a clickable banner. I don't think this one's clickable. Did we replace this with a non-clickable? Okay, it's not clickable, but it can be clickable. But we were trying to figure out why they closed our contest down. So we were trying different things to see if they're going to let us stay up. And they have let us stay up here. But we just haven't promoted it anymore because the contest is no good the way it was because we were relying on, on MySpace. So we rebuilt this to see if they're going to let us stay back up. And we have undergroundconfessions.com is tiled in the background in light gray lettering. Undergroundconfessions.com is at the top. My description says I'm an internet marketing expert who speaks at conferences and I talk about free content. These are links right here. They can click these links and come over to my Underground Confessions blog. You can actually put links on your MySpace profile pages and they can come visit your website. Don't do you any good from a search engine standpoint, but from a social engine standpoint, meaning users find it and click it, does you lots of good. They can click this link. What did I do here? Anyone want to guess? Drives them over to my Underground Confessions blog. I'm trying to target them for the Underground Confessions blog. I built the whole thing around internet marketing information. I took the most popular posts as measured by my software on my blog that I'm driving them to, and I put those titles and those links here. It's the most popular stuff on my website. Doesn't that make sense that that's what the people I'm trying to track want to see too? If the people I'm trying to track vote by using those particular categories on my website, then why not just put them here too? And they can click these links, they come over to my website. You can do this for 100 different ones. You can have as many MySpace pages as you want. It takes Justin Mario 10 minutes to set one up and then doing the tweaks, how long to do all the tweaks. Including the background images. And CSS too, so if you guys are CSS workers, you can actually CSS to control this. And there's step by step in the tutorials that you have for changing and, and, and setting these things up and then and modifying them also. Any questions? I think everybody wants to quit. That's good for me too. Oh, there's Anthony. Not with you guys looking. They might be able to. I checked this morning. There was some money made. Nothing spectacular. It could have been you guys for all I know. So what's the point, to be honest? 
I can tell you with absolute certainty there was money made on that site. But you guys could have clicked it. There were AdSense ads. What? Don't click my ads. I don't want you to do it. Yeah, we didn't have internet access. So the, yes, it did. It did, as a matter of fact. And the traffic also has been sent to Amazon from the total digital camera blog, too. No sales were made, but 60 or 70 visitors came through, clicked the Amazon links on the site, and went through to Amazon yesterday. I checked the stats this morning. So. Uh, bullets below headline increases conversions. You guys want to get the speakers up here and... Yeah, you're saying because you want to get up here because you know him. I want to get done. John Reese and Andy Jenkins were asking for feedback, and Jeff Walker and a bunch of other friends, Frank Kern and stuff, and told me, John said, I've had really good luck putting bullet points below the headlines on my sales letters. And Andy said, you know what? I had the same results. So what did I do? Split tested the hell out of it. What did I learn? Well, this is the page that wins. This is one of the pages that's up there still. I don't know if this is the exact one because testing has continued. Different color variations of the headlines, different emphasis on the words. But in general, bullet points, they don't even have to be good bullet points. Bullet points in general underneath the headline will convert. Frank saw my bullet points and he said, I don't, I hate those bullet points. I said, I was in a hurry, so I put them up. I tested it. I said, boy, but there is no doubt that those bullet points, even the bad ones, increase my conversions substantially. And I mean, well worth the few efforts of cutting and pasting your bullet points from the bottom of the sales letters to the top. Unbelievable increase in conversions for this particular sales letter, this particular market. There's been different variations. Thousands and thousands and thousands of testing tries have been done. Variations haven't been done that. And I just mean the bulk pages. I don't use multivariate testing anymore. I stick with the straight A, B. Sometimes I run three or four at a time. But I've run a lot of traffic through it. So. But consistently, the bullet points helped. Frank's a wonderful copywriter. I ask, if I want copyright, I'll ask Frank. He gave me some stuff that I thought, that's great. That's a great improvement. And I believe he's one of the best internet marketing copywriters out there. Failed miserably. Hated my bullet points. Hated my headline. Mine won substantially better. But he writes better copy than I do by far. Each market's different. Who knows my market better than I do? Right? That's why I like to write my own copy. Yes? Where are the bullet points on there? Right here. These are bullet points. There's actually